Recently, Bookmark stopped by the Catholic Marketing Network and got a chance to catch up with various authors in attendance. We hope you enjoy this interview. And we continue here at the CMN in Birmingham, Alabama. It's always fun to run into Doug. David Carolla. Always good to see you. Having to do with Fatima. Fatima is my favorite apparition, I have to say. I always good. love the kids. Well, we, we're with you on that. The Barb <laughs> Ernster is here as well. Uh, joined you to talk about a book that she edited, right? That is one of your newest things, A Pathway Under the Gaze of Mary, a biography of Sister Lucia, yeah. Jesus and the Immaculate Heart. Let me ask you before we talk specific about that, the big news, of course, is that she was just named a venerable, so it yeah. seems like things are moving ahead. Were you aware this was going to happen? We were aware that it was coming this year. We didn't okay. know. It was speculated it was coming this year. We, we are in regular contact with the vice postulator, Sister Angela Coelho, and um, uh, she said almost certainly this year, and then it just just fell on us the other day, and it was great. But great news, because um, I think now, you know, this is, she is now the one who brought the Fatima message forward, okay? Right. St. Jacinta and Francisco, who died very young, right. you know, they, they gave us a way of the simplicity of life. She lived it for 88 right. years and really put the Fatima message in our hearts. Right. I think so. Which it seems like in the world we live in today with Our Lady's messages about the attacks on the family and things like that, it's incredibly prophetic. Yes. To use a word. Oh, absolutely. That uh, is yeah. obviously true. How did you get involved with editing this book? That well, we were handed the English translation and asked to bring it to publish it. Mm -hmm. And so my first job was to get it into the way that we speak in English as opposed yeah. to Portuguese. Yeah. And so it took us a while to get it ready. And, and it's been a, a great seller for us. But I, what I really love about the pathway is it's it's not only all of her memoirs, but her own diary, her personal diary that the sisters found after she died mm -hmm. has been incorporated into the book. And so there's such a great um, beauty in learning about Luc Sister Lucia's spirit mm -hmm. and her spirituality. And we can learn so much from her. What did As, you learn? Well, what I learned was the Fatima message. I learned mm -hmm. how to live it every day. And she teaches what she called the long, slow martyrdom of everyday living, mm -hmm. which most of us have to live. Right. And so she got up every day and gave her will over to God completely. And that's what we learned from her. She's almost like St. Therese in the little way. So Lucia is going to be teaching us for many years to come. Right. What message does she always teach you? You know, again, consistency, perseverance. What do we pray for? You know, per perseverance in life, final perseverance. Hers was a life of perseverance. It wasn't a simple life. People say, oh, she went to a convent and then life was beautiful. She stayed within the walls for 88 years. I don't think so. Right. You know, she really struggled because she knew what Our Lady... It's only in the movies. It's in the movies, you're right, Doug. <laughs> and that's exactly the point. Our Lady had said, when the children asked them, will we go to heaven? She said, yes, just sent to Francisco soon, but you must stay a while longer. Right. That was 88 years. It makes you think of eternity. And here she is, 88 years, she set an example for us. Right. And that's, I think, so beautiful in these books that we are honored to co-publish with the sisters, uh, the Path Under the Gaze of Mary, the Rosary Sisters Meditations, and of this new one, Memorare, which is, we're just in the process of working with them. It's an annual now that they're putting out. Mm -hmm. And as her cause moves forward, and we see it moving quickly now, and more and more importantly, it's, 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 it's talking about the, the inner part of her life in the convent with these sisters, who I personally have gotten yeah. to know very well by dealing with them in right. a legal thing, sitting through a great talking, publishing rights with them, right. but it's just been an honor because it really teaches you, you know, this, the, what she put in the hearts right. of them as well as us. Do you think uh, there's been a resurgence in interest in Fatima? I think there has been. I mean, I go back, especially the centennial six years ago. Of course, mm -hmm. you know, we did a lot with the network during right, that sure. time. And I, I think, um, yes, I think a lot of the disruption in the world, and even in the church, I think, was kind of like the Fatima message, kind of like breaking open something for us to see and now to make better. And I think these are the things that the Fatima message is all about, that we are to return to living in accord with the Gospels. Okay? And this is what we had forgotten, I think, as Catholics. As, you know, the, the message is simple. There's nothing in the Fatima message that isn't really already in the teachings of the church. If it's so simple, why don't we do it, Barbara? <laughs> I think the hardest thing that Lucia said was the most essential was to get up every day and offer your sufferings and accept and bear patiently with them. But she said the rosary was the spiritual aid that would help us do that. And so we make it complicated because we just don't want to suffer. It's not in our nature to want to suffer. And it's easier to complain when things aren't going so well. Mm -hmm. But Lucia teaches that, that patience and that, that willingness to pray that prayer that Mary taught them. You know, whenever you make a sacrifice, say, oh my Jesus, it is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners. 
and for reparation to the Immaculate Heart. It was a simple prayer that she repeated all her life. And so it's a matter of getting in the habit of aligning your hearts with God's and aligning your wills with Him and just trusting that everything that's happening is in His providence and care. So, David, what do you do with people They say, Here, here's Our Lady, appears to these poor kids, uh, they do everything she asked them to do, the two of them die right away, the other one has to live 88 years yeah. you know, in a convent and suffering all these years. Uh, you know, I'm not sure I want to be that good of a friend of Our Lady. <laughs> That's a good point. What was her biggest suffering all those years? Mm -hmm. She was told she was going to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, other than St. Dismas from the cross, who had a, who should have an easier process when you really right. think about it, okay? But she was told that, you know, she knew and she had a glimpse of heaven with right. Our Lady, okay? And they had a glimpse of hell, you know? So they saw, she knew what was going on in all those years. She had to know, she knew that something so great was ahead of her, but yet she knew she had to leave it for us. Kind of like Our Lady who right. did, you know, you know, she stayed how many years after Christ died and, and, and really, you right. know, formed the apostles, quite frankly, right. and the disciples. And I think that's really what her mission is for us. Right. It's also interesting, too, because one of the visions, obviously, the vision of hell, yet we have a world today where a lot of people they say either hell doesn't exist or there's nobody in it. Well, apparently somebody was in it, at least the version that the kids saw, right? right. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. It's the same vision that um, St. Faustina had, and mm -hmm. many saints have had this vision. And so, and these children were so young, how could they have come up with these images? Right. You know, they didn't have Spirit Halloween stores right down the street like we do today. Mm -hmm. So they came up with this, and, and, and it was the same vision that St. Faustina had. She describes the exact same. And so, you know, they were frightened. They would have, they would have died had Our Lady not been with them. Right. And so, and it so impacted Jacinta, we know that she spent the rest of her life accepting any suffering right. she could to mm -hmm. save souls from that fate. Right. Absolutely. The power is in how these kids. Yeah. So that's a pathway under the gaze of Mary. There's another book, uh, Give Me Consolation, First Saturday Personal Prayer Journal in Honor of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Is this, an, is this a new publication? Uh, relatively Press? new, and that again is, is right. how to practice the First Saturday's devotion. Right, absolutely. One of the beautiful right. devotions right. that right. Sister Lucia brought to us after the uh, the apparitions of 1925 in Ponte Vedra, Spain, where Our Lady gave her, you know, the, the, the most important thing about making reparations on, on the first Saturdays of the month. And I think that, you know, that's why that book is just a step by step mm -hmm. into doing that beautifully. Uh, yeah, it so. also has a journal. You can it's a journal. You keep it. Right. You know. From your meditation. I yeah. see, for yourself. Yeah. Because you're doing they say five for Saturdays. We say don't stop at five. Right. Keep going. You know, I mean, you're going to do, uh, you do it every month, every month. Continue so, it for yourself. Why do you think those, uh, those kinds of practices kind of fell away? Well, I think for the same reason that holiness in general has fallen away. You know, these are, these are practices of holiness. Just why people fall away from, you know, from praying praying a rosary from attending mass right, okay? confession. L l confession and it's a it's a digression you know we we, we, don't, we don't jump off a cliff away from God we go down a slope right, we drift right. we drift and that's the most dangerous thing and we keep drifting right. away and you know she's telling us come on back <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah over here exactly I'm here look over here yeah okay yeah there's also another book here while we're talking, you've got a whole slew of books here, yeah. uh, Mary's Gentle Path, Daily Meditations from, from the Writings of Sister Lucia. And this is what, a day-by-day -day format? What's it is, the format? Barb did the editing on that. She, oh, okay. she could really yeah. speak. Written you can by, tell us all about it, Barb. Yeah. It's written by Catherine Moran. And she took, um, you know, Lucia had so many beautiful quotes in her book, mm -hmm. Calls from the Message of Fatima, and throughout her writings. You can learn so much from her. So she picked out 365 quotes in, in which we can learn from Lucia, and then she has meditations and reflections and a little prayer right. challenge every day. So it's put together so you can, by the time you're done with 365 days, you will know Sister Lucia very well and what she taught us. So what else is uh, going on? You've, you've got a lot happening here, obviously. Books and many books we've done over the years right, yeah. as well. Uh, what else is happening in the apostolate itself right now? Well, we're, we're being active in this uh, Eucharistic revival. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, okay. I, I was on with you and we, we spoke of the book Night of Love some right. time back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was, you know, that is, I mean, Eucharistic, you know, what is the Fatima message? It began in 1916 with the Angel of Peace and yeah. the third apparition and gave them the Eucharist. Right. You know, Eucharist because right. the, you know, reparation, Eucharistic reparation mm -hmm. is, the, is the key to the message of Fatima, mm -hmm. you know. Obviously, you know, that, that, the, the Eucharist is the source and summit of our, our faith, 
you need to believe that to be a Catholic, to, to be a practice, to be well, to practice, to believe, to profess yourself as a Catholic. Right. We have to do that. And I think that's our problem. We've walked away. I mean, if, if, it's, if those, those stats that say that 70% right. of nominal Catholics don't believe in a real presence, I don't know where that comes from. It seems pretty accurate to me. Because doesn't that reflect right, the yeah. percentage of people that go to Mass Poor on Sunday? Per catechesis. Per catechesis. You know. So who's the fault? Right. Who's that fault? We are. Right. We are as a society. If there are bad people in society, if they're in the world, if they're in politics or in the church, they came from us. Right. <laughs> okay. We have to make it better at the grassroots level, and these devotions do it. And devotion to the Eucharist is really. And if somebody wanted to find out more about the work of, of the Apostolate itself, where would they go? BlueArmy.com. We are all of our books are available, of course, right. and through EWTN. Sure. And, and uh, but yeah, absolutely. We uh, we just BlueArmy.com. There are so many resources. Our beautiful pledge that goes back to 1947 when our, our co-founder right. sat with Sister Lucia and worked that out. And the bottom line, she said, is Our Lady wants people to become holy. Right. That's what it's about. Yeah. Right. Sounds like Mother Angelica. Thank there you, you go. David. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Good luck at the show. To get a copy of the materials mentioned on this episode of EWTN Bookmark, log on to our web store, EWTNRC.com, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, or call 1-800-854-6316.